What's up guys, my name is Brandon and today I'm going to be showing you the first 12 things to do after unboxing your brand new Samsung Galaxy S10, S10 Plus, or S10e. Now I did just upload my unboxing and first impressions video of the S10 Plus and the S10e, so if you missed that video, definitely check it out, it's up in the cards right now and also linked down in the description below. And I will also be comparing the S10 Plus here and the S10e to the iPhone, so I'll be comparing it to the iPhone XS, XS Max, and the iPhone XR and speed tests and things like that that so definitely stay tuned to the channel for those videos but anyways let's run through the first 12 things I did after getting my s10 plus here these are gonna be kind of a mix of settings to change and some basic things you should just consider changing or tweaking inside of your s10 all right so let's kick things off with securing your device by setting up facial recognition or fingerprints now my preferred method is the fingerprint sensor so if you want to get to that go to settings go to biometrics and security and of course you could have set this up in the first setup screen but if you didn't this is how you get back to it and if you decided to do facial recognition on the setup screen I would go in here and add fingerprints now you can do facial recognition as well I just prefer fingerprints and I think everybody should have this it's really cool on the s10 and s10 plus it's different on the s10e and I'll talk about that here in a second but let's go ahead and go in here and you can add up to four fingerprints in here and you do also have some settings down here now one thing I will say is that in my if you watch my unboxing video you'll notice how I actually was looking down at the phone so I kind of put my thumb over here and had a very different like grip on the phone than I normally would. So I would really pay attention to how you put in your fingerprint when it's actually registering your finger and make sure it's how you're actually gonna always be unlocking your phone. Otherwise, you're gonna have a lot of failed attempts. But yeah, definitely go ahead and add a fingerprint in there. Again, you can do facial recognition if you want to and you do also have the preferences right here if you do want to have the preferred, if you wanna change the preferred from facial recognition to fingerprint or vice versa. And then as I mentioned, it is a little bit different on the S10e. We actually use the power button here on the side. So if I put my thumb on there you can see it unlocks just like so so it is pretty cool and pretty convenient but it is also kind of annoying because you do have to put your thumb up pretty high on the side and it's not very natural feeling and it's not as accurate as the end screen fingerprint sensor is on the s10 and s10 plus but i would definitely still set it up for the s10e because it's really cool and your thumb is always going to be around that area the next thing you want to change is the auto lock setting if you don't want your screen always dimming on you or just locking up on you you should definitely go ahead and change this so if you go into our settings and go to display and then go down until you see screen timeout I have mine set to five minutes but I would recommend either two five or ten minutes anything below that your screen is just gonna always dim and it does get really annoying to always have to tap it just to make sure it doesn't go back to the lock screen and we do also have some other things inside of the display settings right here that you should change as well now adaptive brightness is the first thing and that is basically just auto brightness if you go into here you can also reset your usage patterns because you can read right there that it basically keeps track of your adjustments for your brightness and it applies them into similar lighting conditions. So you can change that or reset that. Uh, we have blue light filter here as well. Some people don't like blue light being emitted by their phones. So you can disable that or turn on the blue light filter if you want. And then we have night mode. This is the biggest one that I definitely love to have on here. So if we turn this off, take a look at how bad the settings looks. It kind of just looks outdated and old and just like every other OS out there. So night mode makes it look really good. It's a really good looking dark mode. The keyboard is also dark throughout the whole OS. It just looks amazing. And if you go ahead and tap on this, you also have scheduled night mode and you have a cool little animation here as well. So if we toggle on, turn on as scheduled, you can see right here, you have a sunrise to sunset. So you can have it automatically do it or you can set your own custom schedule, which is really cool. I personally like to have mine on all the time. I don't care what time of day it is. I love night mode, so I definitely keep this on. It's up to you if you wanna have it on or just on at night or whatever, but I love the look of this here. Then we do also have the screen resolution. I would go ahead and toggle this on to the highest resolution possible on the S10 and S10 Plus. The S10e, you're not able to do that, but you can change it right there on the S10 and S10 Plus. Then we do also have home screen right here, so you can change the home screen grid and the home screen layout. We have the apps button. If you don't want badges to show up, you can toggle that on and off right there. We have a bunch of other things on here as well. We also have hide apps, so you can actually hide apps applications so they don't show up anywhere. The next thing you guys want to do is turn on reduce animation. So if you go into our settings and advanced features, you'll see down here we have reduce animations and you can see there it says tone down motion effects on the screen such as when apps are opened or closed. So if I turn this on 
and go back to the home screen, take a look at how quick it went there. There was no animation. Now, if we turn that off, take a look at the animation when I go to the home screen. You see how much slower that is? So definitely turn on reduce animations if you want your phone feeling faster. Now, right below that, we have the next thing to change, and that is gesture control. So if you go into motions and gestures right here, you can see you have lift to wake, double tap to wake, we have smart stay, and things like this. Now, I like to turn lift to wake off just because it can disable battery. Double tap to wake up is fine. We do also have smart stay right here where it says keep the screen on while you're looking at it. So this is good if you don't want your phone timing out. If you have that auto lock on something like two minutes, it's good to have this on. I like to have it on in general anyways. You also have some other things down here as well. Now, let me get to how to actually enable gestures here. So if we go into display and then go all the way down navigation bar, this is where you enable full screen gestures. So this is very similar to iOS and the iPhone, the iPhone 10 and above with the gestures where you swipe up to go home. It's like that now if you enable these gestures. I think this looks way, way better than having navigation buttons always at the bottom there. It looks outdated and old when you have those navigation buttons always down there. And the gestures just make everything flow so much better, especially when you turn gesture hints off. I would turn that off because otherwise you'll see three little lines down there where basically you're already going to know where these gesture buttons are. So I would turn that off and it looks really clean. You just swipe up to go home. You swipe left to go to the apps and then you swipe right to go back. So really awesome. I would definitely turn on the gestures here. And while we're back in the display settings, if we go to edge screen, this is where you can also change your edge panel. So if we have the edge panel right over here, you can see I have mine set for the apps edge. Of course, you can do this very easily with your thumb, just like so. If you have the settings down here, you can change this between the apps edge, the live message, people edge if you want to have you know quick and easy access to your contacts you can do all these different things right here i like just to have it for apps i like to be able to easily get back to applications i did not mean to turn that off so if you go ahead and swipe over here you can see it can easily get in whatever application i want of course you can toggle these to whatever you want and move them around as you please the next thing i did was i installed applications and organized my home screen so of course i downloaded all my applications from the play store there all your social media apps all that good stuff and then of course i did customize it so if you go ahead and swipe up you have all your applications to be tap and hold of course you can add it to your home screen or you can select multiples by clicking select items select them and then just drag them to the top to put them on the home screen. And if we go into our applications right here, I like to actually change this right here. So if we go to finder search, if we go to sort, I like to do this by alphabetical order. That way I know where everything is. I'm very OCD about this. I like having everything in alphabetical order. And I would recommend if you guys feel the same to change that to alphabetical order. You do also have some other settings in here you can change as well. And then of course, if you wanted to have multiple pages, you can just swipe over and tap and hold and you can add pages right there. This is also where you get to the wallpapers, the themes, the widgets, and your settings as well. If you wanted to delete this empty page, I like having an empty page just so I can see my beautiful wallpaper right there. And uh, if you don't want that though, you can just tap and hold and then click on delete or you can swipe over and add another blank page. And then you can also toggle Bixby Home on or off as well if you go over to the left. Now, speaking of beautiful wallpapers, that's the next thing I did. I installed a really awesome wallpaper from an application called Wally. -E. So you can see this is the application right here. It's a really good application for finding really awesome wallpaper. So I would definitely go ahead and download this application or whatever your preferred wallpaper application is and go ahead and set up a nice looking wallpaper on your device. Now, of course, you can also install a theme if you want to, but I personally like just the default theme. I don't really like tweaking it. Uh, they look kind of tacky to me, but if you did want to change the theme, you can also do that. The next thing you guys want to do is set up the always on display. So if you go into our settings and go to lock screen and you'll see always on display is right there. So go ahead and toggle that on. If we go ahead and tap on that, you do also have some tips and some things down here as well. Uh, we have display mode. I have mine as show always. You can do it to tap to show. I believe that's what it is by default or show as schedule. And then you can also show music information if you want to. And then you can see right here, it shows a tip to change the clock style. So if we go to the settings right here in this tip, you can see you can change it. I have mine set at that. I believe the first one is the default. You can also change the color if you want to, if you want it to be like a, a peach color, green color, uh, you know, blue, you can change that right there as well. So yeah, definitely set up the always on display. This is one of my favorite features inside of Android. So definitely set up the always on display if you have not set it up already. And then you can also go into face widgets right here as well and put in today's schedule. You can put your next alarm, your weather. Uh, I don't need Bixby, so I'm just gonna put weather and maybe uh, today's schedule right here and they will show on my always on display. If you go ahead and click on reorder, you can also move these around if you want to. Now with the Samsung Galaxy S10, we have the hole punch display and that kind of interferes with the status bar. And you're gonna notice right away that you're not gonna have as much information up there in the status bar, but we can change that. So 
if we go into settings, notifications, and then go to status bar, I would have this set to all notifications instead of just the three most recent notifications. And then I would also turn on show battery percentage because by default, it doesn't show your battery percentage. So you can have it up there now and you see a lot more information in your status bar, regardless of that hole punch being right there. Now, speaking of the status bar, if we go ahead and swipe down, you can see I do have the brightness right there. And if we go ahead and click this little down arrow right here, you get that by toggling on show control on top. I like always being able to access my brightness there if I need to. And of course you can disable or enable adaptive brightness from here as well. And if you wanted to change the order of these toggles or delete them or anything like that, if you go ahead and swipe down all the way, click these three dots and then button order, you can go ahead and move these around or delete them just like that. Now, the next thing I did was test out the new triple camera setup here on the S10 plus. So you can see we have three buttons down here, right in the middle of the screen at the bottom. And if you go ahead and tap the first one, that's going to be the wide angle lens and take a look at how wide that lens is. It looks so awesome to me and if you go ahead and tap on the first one that's just your regular camera the one we're all used to if we tap again that's the 2x zoom so i really like the wide angle lens right here it takes awesome pictures i would just go ahead and you know test it out and just try it out take some pictures and just admire how great this camera really is so definitely try it out you can also do videos as well live focus which is the portrait mode so yeah just try out the new camera i have been really impressed with it i may even make a video just talking about the camera on the s10 plus here and the next thing i did on my s10 plus here is I disabled single pressing on the Bixby button so I did not accidentally press it so nobody likes accidentally pressing the Bixby button it's super annoying and it happens all the time so now you can see if I press it nothing happens but if I double press it you can see that opens Bixby so basically if we go into Bixby if we click these three dots right here go to settings we go down to Bixby key you can see you have the option right here to press once or press twice to open up Bixby and then on the S10e you also get the option to open up an application with a single press and a double press opens up Bixby so definitely go ahead and change this to double pressing on the Bixby button to open up Bixby to reduce the amount of times you accidentally press on it and then the final thing you guys should do after getting your brand new Samsung Galaxy Galaxy S10 is to get a case. This thing is beautiful on the back. No matter what color you get is absolutely beautiful. The glass, the color, everything. And it is very fragile and it does also get a lot of fingerprints. So I would definitely go ahead and get a case for your new S10. There's a lot of cheap options on Amazon. I will throw those up in the description below. There's also a lot of good high-end cases from places like Spec or Spigen or there's a lot of other places. Rhino Shield. There's a ton of great phone case companies out there that I would definitely recommend. And I will have my recommendations down in the description below. So anyways, guys, there you have it. Those are the first 12 things to do after unboxing your brand new Samsung Galaxy S10. If you have anything to add, if there's anything else you did, you know, in the first day of having your device, and I didn't mention it in this video, definitely leave a comment down below. I know there are plenty of other things to do. These are just the first 12 that I did. So yeah, if you guys did enjoy the video, I would appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. Of course, subscribe for a lot of speed tests between the S10 and the iPhones and a lot more content coming up on these phones as well. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching the video, and I'll see you soon.